And to Second Peter and Chapter Three. Second Peter, Chapter Three, page two thousand and eighteen. And I'll read from verse one. Peter says, "This is now, beloved, the second letter I'm writing to you, in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by a way of reminder." That you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets, the commandment of the Lord and Saviour spoken by our apostles. We are commanded in Hebrews not to forsake the assembling together of the saints, and all the more as the day draws near, we are to stir up one another and to encourage one another to love and good deeds. And Peter says here, that he is writing to stir up the believers. And how does he do that? By reminding them of things that they already know. How can we stir up our brothers and sisters in Christ? Is it by coming with some great, wonderful, fresh revelation they've never heard before? That nobody else has ever heard before. It's only we've got it. No, it's simply by reminding of glorious truths regarding the Lord and His ways, His attributes and His character. We need constant reminder of things that we possibly already know. Simple truths coming again and again perhaps through different people or in different ways, but by the Holy Spirit stirring afresh our hearts and encouraging us and stirring us up. And so I want to encourage us all and exhort us for this coming year. We're living in very, very significant days and uh, I want to... Perhaps by way of reminder, look at one or two things. If you'd like to turn then to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. We're living very close to the return of Jesus. We are living very close to the return of Jesus. Of that I'm fully convinced, and I hope you are too. As I said, I think the other week, I've been preaching that all my Christian life, and I've always been convinced that we're in the last days. Something is very different about the days in which we live. Mm -hmm. Something new in that sense that's not been for 1900 years, and that is the return of the Jews to the land of Israel mm -hmm. in fulfillment of God's promises to regather them to that land and give that land to that people and re-establish the nation of Israel. For 1900 years they've been scattered but kept by God and God has in a day re-established the nation of Israel. We are now in the last of the last days. and. That is the one standout sign, is that nation and that people. Surrounded by enemies, surrounded by people, absolutely committed to their destruction, and yet kept by God for a day in which He will open their eyes. They will look upon the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, whom they pierced, and they'll mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. And a remnant of that people, those who've not been destroyed by Antichrist in the time of Jacob's trouble, will look unto him. They'll look to Jesus, and all Israel will be saved in fulfillment of God's promises. Not one word will fall to the ground, all will be accomplished. What God has said, God will do. Heaven and earth will pass away. Jesus said, my words will never pass away. We can trust the word of God. We cannot trust the word of men in these days. We cannot trust the world's media. We cannot trust 
the world's governments, dear friends, but we can trust the Word of God. The Word of God abides forever, and it's very important that we know what it says. So let's read then Matthew 24, I'll read from verse 1, Jesus came out of the temple and was going away when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. Just by way of aside, they were very impressed by the stones, they were very impressed with that temple built by Herod. A very ungodly man, a wicked man, a type of antichrist. The Jews are going to be impressed again with a building, with a temple in Jerusalem. It will be rebuilt. It's got to be there because the abomination of desolation must sit in the holy place. Let everyone understand. Antichrist will have a hand in it. And it's soon coming. They've got everything ready for it. It's just a matter of things taking place for the rebuilding of a temple on the Temple Mount. But they were very impressed with the temple. They were looking at the big stones, big beautiful stones. If you like big beautiful stones, <laughs> praise the Lord. But what was Jesus looking at? I'll tell you what Jesus was looking at. Jesus had his eyes on a woman. And what was she doing? She was giving to the Lord everything. Dear friends, we can be impressed with structures. We can be impressed with big buildings and man-made, all kinds of things, dear friends. But Jesus is looking at people's hearts. And he's looking at those who have been given fully to him. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth. And what's he looking for? He's looking for people who are completely trusting and devoted to him. Like that woman. Don't forget that, dear friends. Because we can be so impressed with the outward appearances. And God's looking at the heart. He's looking at your heart this morning. He's looking at the hearts of men. And he's just looking for one who's completely given to him. And he'll strongly support them. He'll strongly support them. So be given to Jesus. Commit yourself afresh to him today. And he'll strongly support you. You need him in these coming days. He'll strongly support those whose hearts are completely given to him. Praise God. Well, let's read on. He answered and said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another which will not be torn down. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will all these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and then the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name saying, I am anointed. Are we seeing that in these days? People claiming to be anointed. Claiming to have the anointing. Yes. Absolutely, dear friends. It's flooding the God channels. Don't watch them. Don't be misled. Stay away from it, dear friends. You'll be hearing of wars and rumours of wars. See that you're not frightened. Those things must take place, but that's not yet the end. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there'll be famines and earthquakes. All these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. They'll deliver you to tribulation, will kill you. You'll be hated by all nations on account of my name, and at that time many will fall away, will deliver up one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. This is the majority, dear friends, of professing believers. Not nominal Christians, but professing believers. The vast majority of Christians are going to do what? They are going to fall away. They are going to be misled. 
They are going to go after false prophets and false teachers. And many will stand before him, Jesus says on that day, saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do mighty works in the name of Jesus? And I will have to say to them, depart from me. Off you go. I never knew you. I never knew you. Hey friends, he's coming for those who are walking with him. He's coming for those who love him. He's coming for those who worship him. Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him, and those who are walking with Jesus, dear friends, he's going to take. So walk with Jesus. Fellowship with him. Love him. Serve him. <clears throat> because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. cold. The vast majority, dear friends, so don't go with the flow. Don't go with the majority, because Jesus warns in the last days, the majority are going to be going wrong. Get that way of thinking into your minds. The one who endures to the end, he shall be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world, for a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Back to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, and reading from verse 9. The Lord's not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but he is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to ask Jesus into their hearts. Now, all to come to repentance. Why is God putting up with what is going on today? Because make no mistake about it, it grieves him, it angers him, the things that are happening on the earth. As in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot, so it is in the days in which we live, and the wrath of God is being stirred. Why is he not stepped in already? Because he's patient, he's long-suffering, he's still wanting that people come to repentance. And we need to be preaching a message of repentance, dear friends. Repent, the kingdom of God is... At hand, Jesus is coming back soon. Time is running out. And people need to turn around the whole of their lives, their way of thinking. The enemies of God, children of wrath by nature, <coughs> living according to the lusts of their own hearts and going their own way. And they need a complete turn around from that and a full surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, to call upon his wonderful name and to be saved. For he who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <coughs> He'll not turn away any repentant sinner and all heaven rejoices over just one sinner who truly repents, who truly Repents. God is looking for repentance. He's waiting for repentance. But time is running out. God is shaking everything. He's shaking nations. He's shaking governments. He's shaking the powers of the heavens. He's shaking all things. But he wants a witness. I've said it many times, but a wonderful illustration is the story of Jericho. God shook that place, didn't he? And everything collapsed. They thought it was impregnable. I mean, it was quite an impressive structure, very thick walls. They would never have fallen down. 
but God brought them down. God brought the whole thing down. It all came tumbling down. Except for one thing, which stuck out like a sore thumb. What was that? It was Rahab's house. Rahab's house. A woman who'd taken refuge in the God of Israel. And her house stood. The household of faith. A harlot. Who put her trust in the living God. Stuck out like a sore thumb. And that's what God wants. He wants the people who are going to stand out because they're trusting in the living God. When everything around is shaking and everybody's stressed out, falling to pieces, God is shaking everything, there should be a people who stand out. Dear friends, that should be you, it should be me. We should be different yeah. because we're trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, <clears throat> what are the signs then of his coming? There are many. I want to just go through a few this morning. Jesus says they're like birth pangs. They're going to get more and more frequent and more and more painful. They are earthquakes and volcanoes. That would include volcanoes, seismic activity. A massive increase in seismic activity. Are we seeing that? We are. You can Google it for yourself, but we are seeing an increase in major earthquakes and volcanic activity. And there's much worse to come. What else? Wars and threats of wars, particularly in the Middle East. Are we seeing that? We are indeed. There are wars in almost every nation in the Middle East. There are disturbances, aren't there? That whole region is in uproar. It's under war and threat of war. What else? Ethnic conflicts. Conflicts revolving around ethnicity. Is that stirring up in the world today? Racial conflicts? BLM? Yes. It's all taking shape, dear friends. Even across Africa, sadly, all tribal um, enmities are resurfacing and causing massive conflicts everywhere. There'll be famines. There will be food shortages. Get your tins of corned beef ready. Because there'll be a problem with supplies. The Antichrist, when he comes, will have control over the supply of food. Be very sure of that. Like Herod, a major type of Antichrist, he was controlling food supply in the Middle East. And we need to watch out for that. There's going to be food shortages. Jesus said there'll be famines. Famines. Okay? Across the earth, in various places. What else? Persecution of Christians and a rise in anti-Semitism in these last days. There's never been so much persecution of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. When I first got saved, it was in the communist countries. We used to pray for the suffering church. We had prayer meetings for the suffering church, and that was like China and Russia and places like that. Now, it's uh, Islamic countries. Islam is becoming more and more um, violent, and uh, persecution of believers is rising massively. But Jesus said, you'll be hated by all on account of my name. Persecution will come in one form or another to different degrees right across the earth, even in what we think of as Christian Western nations like Britain, America. There'll be a hatred of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and persecution. What else? There'll be a rise in lawlessness. Are we seeing that? 
Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, what was the days of Noah? The earth was filled with violence. We have a very violent generation. We have children who have been raised with the most violent um, computer games and things. Blowing people up and killing people all the time. It's not good for your mind. You know, they, they used to train special forces by doing that. They, they, they just basically got them used to killing. Without a thought, being able to push a button and destroy a human life. Well, we have a whole generation which has been primed on violent computer games and we're beginning to see some of these ridiculous, lawless mass killings and, and violence is pervading throughout this generation and <clears throat> will get worse as we approach the return of Jesus. But something else, turn to Daniel and chapter 8 very important verse to think on. There are two spirits very much at work. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. What is He like? Well, Jesus tells us that He would send another the same as Him, the Holy Spirit, the Helper. The Holy Spirit is the same in character and attributes as Jesus. Exactly the same. If you understand what Jesus is like, you understand what the Holy Spirit is like. Don't be frightened of the Holy Spirit. Don't be fearful of being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you love Jesus, the Holy Spirit is the same. He is identical in character and in characteristics. If you would love Jesus to be a major part in your life, you should want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't ever be afraid of being controlled and empowered and flooded with the Holy Spirit because He is identical in character and attributes. To the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's another spirit at work in these days. What's that? It is the spirit of Antichrist, dear friends. The spirit of Antichrist is very much at work in the world today. And the spirit of Antichrist is identical in character and attribute to the Antichrist who is to come. Do you understand? The devil counterfeits the Lord. Yeah? He wants to be like the Most High. That's how he fell. That's why he was cast out of heaven. He wanted to be like the Most High. He always copies what God does. There's a counterfeit to almost everything that God does. A satanic counterfeit. Well, the spirit of Antichrist is... Basically the same as the man of lawlessness who is to come. In character, in working, in attributes, in everything that's going on. So if we understand and see what the Antichrist is like, there's a spirit at work throughout the earth that's working like him. Do you understand? You get the point. Well, let's read then Daniel 8 and verse 25. Through his shrewdness, he will cause deceit to succeed, prosper. There's a man, the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, who is to come, who will be personally possessed by Lucifer himself. As all the fullness of God dwelt in Jesus, guess what? All the fullness of Lucifer will dwell in Antichrist. And he will be shrewd and he will cause deceit to succeed by his influence. So, if we're very close to the appearance of Antichrist, 
if the spirit of Antichrist is very much at work, guess what? We should be seeing in the world today a spirit so much at work that deceit is prospering. Things which make no sense, which are not logical or rational or reasonable, are prevailing in every government, in every organization, right across the earth. Is that happening today? Yes. Yes, it is. That's how close we are to the appearance of the man of lawlessness, dear friends. Because the spirit of Antichrist is so much at work. Think of Adolf Hitler, a major type of Antichrist. A man who came to prominence and power by the spirit of Antichrist. When you see what happened in Nazi Germany, if you ever see any of those clips, have you ever seen any of those clips like the, the Nuremberg rallies and stuff? Look at the people. A spirit of antichrist, a spirit of deceit, is prospering over those people. They are completely entranced to worship that man. Like that. Otherwise intelligent, rational, reasonable people were believing the craziest things because of a spirit that was work and which flooded a whole nation, dear friends, it won't just be a nation, it will be nations. And we're living in those days. Deceit is prospering. Things that make no sense, which are not logical, reasonable, or rational. And you can stand and, and, and speak the truth, and people can't see it. Why? Because they've been given over, dear friends. God is handing people over to delusion. You say, why is God doing that? Romans chapter 1 tells us there's a downward spiral when a people, a nation, a generation will not honour God, they'll not give Him thanks, they'll not honour Him as Creator, they'll not honour Him and give him thanks, and give him praise, but they worship creation, they want to save old Mother Earth, they want to hug trees, they start worshipping environment rather than creator, and where does it take people? They're given over to homosexuality and every wicked thing, like Sodom and Gomorrah, like the days of Lot, and then the judgment comes upon them, a delusion which causes blindness. Dear friends, the first stage of God's judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah was not fire and brimstone from heaven. It was blindness that the people couldn't even see the door. And we're living in days where God is handing people over. People who have accepted homosexuality, people who have gone down that route of uncleanness and perverseness, people who have welcomed homosexual marriage, who are into all this gender nonsense and, and everything else, in total rebellion to God, God has given them over, and dear friends, you can witness to them, but they can't see the door. Because they're blind with the blindness from God. Perilous days, dear friends. Don't expect because you're speaking the truth, and everything that you're saying is reasonable and rational, and obvious. people are going to be able to see it because the spirit of Antichrist is causing deceit to prosper. People are embracing lies, wickedness, foolishness, the craziest things. 
which don't make any sense at all, God's given them over to blindness. These are the days which we're living in, dear friends. <clears throat> Lawlessness. What else? <clears throat> Luke 21, verse 9. Disturbances. We've looked at this many times before. The Greek word akatastasia means without proper place. There will be a massive increase in refugees in the last days. People with, without anywhere, wandering aimlessly, like sheep without a shepherd. Do we have a massive increase in refugees in the world today, dear friends? Displaced persons. Millions. Millions. And it's going to get worse in the days ahead. Luke 21. Let's just read a few verses. We've looked at these things before. Why are we doing it again? I'm stirring you up by way of reminder. Luke 21, verse 25. There'll be signs in sun and moon and stars upon the earth, dismay among the nations, perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, tsunamis, there will be tsunamis, great perplexity and dismay. Perplexity. People not knowing which way to go. That will be something which pervades the earth. People don't know which way to go. They don't know what to do. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They, they look desperately wanting someone. Well, they're going to get someone. Antichrist. They don't have to go for Antichrist. They can go for Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. but they'll go for the man who appears to have all the answers when the world's in total uproar. Dismay, stress, pressure, oppressing. <clears throat> I've said it before. The major cause of absence from work used to be the common cold. Not COVID, <laughs> just the common cold. Now, stress, stress, anxiety, oppressing, it's a spiritual thing dear friends, I'm not mocking anybody or, or criticizing or whatever, there's a whole generation <laughs> grown up with this idea and it's happening more and more. Even within our loved ones and people that we know, you know, there's only one way out of it, and that is Jesus. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me. I'm humble and gentle in spirit, you'll find rest for your souls. Jesus is the answer, dear friends. And finally, fear. Men's hearts will faint through fear. Fear. How do you take over a nation or a... How, how do you manipulate a whole nation of people? Fear. That's how Adolf Hitler came to power. That's how the spirit of Antichrist works. It's what we're seeing in the world today. People are fearful. Isn't that true? Governments are terrorizing their own citizens. It's wicked. People, so elderly people, t 
too terrified to come out of their own houses. Now you can call that what you want, I call it wicked. And I would not like to be in Boris Johnson's shoes when he stands before Jesus. Because they'll give an account. Fear. <clears throat> the Antichrist will come on the back of fear. The major killer in these coming days, I've said it before, I'll say it again, will not be COVID, it will be heart failure. Heart failure. Heart conditions. The death rates rising significantly in these days. And what's going to be the major killer? Heart failure. Anything to do with the vaccinations? Quite possibly. <clears throat> but we're not supposed to say that. But fear. Fear, dear friends. What's the only answer to fear? Faith. Jesus. Trust in Jesus, dear friends. We're all slaves to the fear of death until we come to know Jesus. Until we have the forgiveness of our sins. Until we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Fear. <clears throat> what are the exhortations then? And I'd better hurry up on that. <laughs> Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> few simple exhortations for us all. Hope I've stirred you a little already. Now here's our exhortation. Stir up and encourage one another. Exhort one another. All the more as the day draws near. Ephesians 5 reading from verse 14. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. First exhortation. Wake up! Don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep, dear friends, in these days. Don't put your feet up. Don't be at ease. Woe to those who are at ease in Zion. It's very easy to get discouraged. It's very easy, dear friends, um, to... For the whole thing just to get on top of you, it comes in like a flood, doesn't it? You don't you get sick of hearing it all. You get sick of all the lies, you get sick of all the deceit, you get sick of all the ungodliness. And it's it's easy just to go put your feet up. But we're called to fight the good fight, dear friends. We're called to put on the whole armour of God and to stand. And having done all, to stand. Don't go to sleep, dear friends, in these days. Don't settle for an easy life. Don't put your feet up. Don't spend too much time watching YouTube or whatever. Whoever's on it. Get down on your knees before the Lord. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in His Word. Spend time witnessing and sharing the Gospel. Don't nod off. Don't go to sleep on him. Verse 15. Be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. What should we do when the days are evil? <coughs> Make the most of our time. Redeem the time, because the days are evil. Be careful what we do with our time, dear friends. We haven't got much of it left. The Lord's coming soon. Don't know exactly when. No one knows the day or the hour. But soon. And our time is short. So, it's precious, dear friends. Don't waste time. Commit your way to the Lord. Ask Him what you should be doing with your time. Get away from mindless, meaningless pursuits. And give your time fully to the Lord Jesus Christ. Redeem the time. 
Amen? Stop wasting time. It's not yours if you've given your time to Jesus. If you've given your life to Jesus, it's not yours to waste. We're bought with a price. Glorify God with your body and your time. What else? Let's read on. Do not get drunk with wine, that's dissipation, but be, be filled with the Spirit. Who do we need in these days, dear friends? We need the Holy Spirit, don't we? We need the power from on high. We need that Spirit, which is it, it's not a timid Spirit, but bold. Do you need a bit of boldness? You know where you get it? By being filled with the Holy Spirit. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they went out and boldly made known the Lord Jesus Christ. They weren't stumbling over their words. They weren't struggling to remember verses from the Bible because the Spirit of God was giving them utterance. And a free flow to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need him, dear friends. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit in these days. Seek him. Call upon the Lord. It is your urgent need for the day to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Day after day after day, you need the Spirit of God to come upon you in power. What else? <clears throat> Turn to Isaiah 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Jesus says, before his return, it will be a day like has never been since the creation of the world, nor ever will be again. And unless God had made those times short, no one would survive. Praise God. It's only three and a half years of his wrath. Because any more than that, there'd be nobody left. Isaiah 13, I read from verse 6. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near. What should we be doing? Wailing. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. The judgments of God, dear friends, are coming upon the earth. All hands will fall limp, every man's heart will melt. There it is again. Heart failure. They will be terrified, pains and anguish will take hold of them. They'll writhe like a woman in labour. They will look at one another in astonishment, their faces aflame. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel with fury and burning anger to make the land a desolation and he will exterminate its sinners from it. We should have an element of fearfulness in these days and yet not be fearful. You say that, that's a contradiction. A lot of walking with the Lord is is, is perilous contradictions. But the two things go together. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's a fountain of life, dear friends. It's everything. We should fear God. We should be fearful about what is coming upon the earth. It's not going to be a party. It will be horrendous, dear friends. <coughs> But we don't need to fear. We can trust the Lord. We can trust the Lord. And we can be bold by the Holy Spirit. One last scripture. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. I won't read the whole psalm, but I would recommend that you do so, because it's an important psalm for these days. The nations devising vain things taking counsel together against the Lord. That's the days we're living in. But the last verse says this, verse 12. Worship the Son. Do homage to the Son. Kiss the Son. 
lest he become angry and you perish in the ways, wrath may soon be kindled. How blessed are all those who take refuge in him. Who should we worship? Jesus. Who should we bow to? Jesus. We don't bow to Antichrist. We don't bow to any spirit of Antichrist. We don't bow to any other authority, but we bow to Jesus. All authority in heaven and on earth have been given unto Jesus. He's come in as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus. He's our blessed Saviour, Jesus. We should worship Jesus. Kiss the Son. Worship Jesus, dear friends, in these days. Spend much time praising Him. Spend much time at His feet. Spend much time in adoration. Worship the Son. Worship the Son. There's no substitute for a close relationship with Jesus. Nobody can give you it. You can't buy it from anybody. You can't lend it from anyone. You can only have it yourself because that's the way you live your life. Walk with Him. Worship Him. Listen to Him. Spend time talking to Him. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He's not a million miles away. Yes, He's seated at the right hand of the Father. But you can talk to him every minute of the day. And you should. You should live in an awareness of his presence. You should worship him. You should love him. You should pray to him. And Lord, you should tell people about him. Because he's a wonderful saviour. Amen. Amen. He's the only hope for this world. He's the soon coming king. Dear friends, this world's destined for wrath. This world is destined for darkness. This world is destined for destruction. This world is destined for the judgment of God. And only one can save anyone from man. It's Jesus. So let's speak about him to everyone that we can. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, that we've been born for such a time as this. Esther just lived in an awareness of it. She was reminded by Mordecai, Lord, we need to remind one another we're living in a blessed time. Fearful days. Painful days, Lord, but glorious days. We're seeing the word of God unfold before our very eyes. Jesus is coming soon. And Lord, we pray that you'll help us to stir one another up and encourage one another in these days to love and good day, to spend time in Jesus' presence, to worship him and to speak of him. Lord, fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, we pray. We need him. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.